Ready? Uh, yep. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, the June 8th, 2023 Common Metrics meeting. Uh, we have a uh, actually a rather long agenda today. Uh, most of it was pulled from uh, the last meeting, which we, we didn't make it completely through the, uh, the agenda. Uh, last last meeting so uh, a lot of new metrics to discuss and consider uh so uh but we'll start with an action item from uh, last week which was uh make a new document how to create a metric and the uh the action item for that was uh Bernard was going to take a look at this uh, uh can you move my action items a little later because i'm commuting i've done work but i'll be able to like when I reach to the PC in 10 minutes, and then I'll be able to Okay. Discuss. Will do. I'm going to move that to the end then, and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and jump to uh, Ray's action item, which was the uh, new metric self-merge rate. <laughs> you get a badge for that on GitHub. It's called yeah. the YOLO badge. You only live once. Cool. But anyhow, yeah, I just, uh, I mean, created a doc, I think, last week. Um, so I think I got the first section started. I mean, you should all have like edit rights. I, I think I made it public. So uh, filled out, I think, the first three sections, question, description, yes, and objectives. I can, I can edit yeah. it. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, mm. you know, I'll give you a, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, do we want to take some time and uh, edit this together? Yeah, I mean, maybe Ray, just give your overview of it real fast. Right. And I, I think like Sean, you were in, on the call a couple of weeks ago. I think most everybody else was, uh, I mean, this the genesis of this is that, uh, I mean, unfortunately, you see this happen like in whether it's like a small open source projects or there are companies that claim to be open source, but they don't really behave that way. They may have like a, you know, Apache 2 or a MIT license, but you see like CTOs like submit something and that like five minutes later, it's like it's merged uh, by the same person. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, in in the early days of the project, that's understandable. Like if there are only two or three people working on it, you you can kind of understand it. Um, but if that's still happening two three years later, I think that's obviously problematic, right? And then a lot of times, uh, it's kind of obvious that the work is being done in private somewhere, like a private GitHub repo, and that they just dump the code and and it gets merged, right? So obviously, that's not something you want to see. Um, so want to make sure that there, are, if somebody submits a PR, there's actually a culture of people doing reviews and, um, and, uh, you know, even <laughs> if it's like a simple emoji, we want somebody else who's sort of looking, you know, looking over the work and, and, uh, you have like somebody else like doing the actual merge, like a real reviewer. Uh, cause I mean, this is like something that you can implement, whether it's in GitLab or GitHub, you can just disallow like self merges, right. Or not allow merges at all, unless there's a review. Um, so, um, so, you know, over a period of time, you want to see like, has there been a decrease in self merge, for example, to see if the project's actually starting to mature and, and growing, um, in a right way. So. Uh, yeah, so that's sort of the high level overview. Um, I think I covered most of what's in the description. And I think uh, the people who would be interested in this is, I mean, particularly community managers, if you want to make sure that community is is maturing in, in, in the right direction, uh, they'd be interested in seeing this. And, and whether it's potential users or somebody that's looking for a new community to contribute to, uh, contribute to you want to make sure that there is a good culture of reviews and and good hygiene uh, behind the projects. So it's if if there isn't a good uh, track record of that being done, then why would you use the software or just join the community? Yeah, I I, I, I agree with that. I've, I've I've done it sometimes in myself, but I do yeah. it less and less. Mm. Right. 
I mean, really important um, for for companies or OSPOs as they, um, you know, look at what open source projects they're going to incorporate into their products or infrastructure. Um, mm -hmm. Understanding understanding that this is happening would be super important. I think. Right. I mean, there could be some exceptions, like somebody found a quick typo on on docs. I mean, maybe you can make an exception for that. But even that, like, how difficult is it to ask your colleague to merge your PR? Right. I mean, it can't be that hard. Um, so, if you want to be absolute purist about it, you shouldn't like allow it. But you could certainly make exceptions as as needed. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. We only we only do it when something slips through our testing process and doesn't work. But, but I think it's, it's pretty rare. Yeah, it's an exception rather than, <clears throat> rather than the rate. Then yeah, your, your rate is going to be really low, right? Yep, exactly. Or almost none of them, unless you're doing it on a regular basis. Right. Yeah, but like in the early days of Augur, yeah, was, we were doing it all the time. Right. I mean, so hopefully you'll be able to see that like the early days of Augur, I'm making this up. It was 55%, but last two years, or 95. Been, yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> like in, the, yeah. in the last year, it's been like less than 2%. And yeah. obviously you're seeing the trend in the right, you're trending in the right direction. Right. So, yeah. So I will, I, I will say this, we talked a little bit about the name of the metric last time, mm -hmm. if you recall that. Yeah, uh, when the name came up, just as a like a data point, Sean knew immediately what it was. <laughs> so, but I'm not the. I don't think I'm the. No, I'm the, but I'm not the typical the, newcomer. But I don't think I'm unusual in open source. But that's to me that was a good indicator that yeah you understood what it was right away. Well, on GitHub gives you a badge for it, but it's kind of an ironic badge, right? <laughs> Um, yeah. it, I mean, it, it's called yeah. YOLO, I think I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I and I do think this came up last time too. I'm trying to think if there's any other metrics. Mm -hmm. Like this one definitely has a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Like definitely. I don't know that we really have any others. Kevin or Elizabeth, think, think of like any others? That... Elephant factor, bus factor. I think those have negative connotations in That's the true. same way that self-merge rate does. That's now, and, and, and so in this one, we're we're actually we're measuring an action that we don't want. I think this is actually the only. I think it is actually the only chaos metric where you're measuring an action that is undesirable. Uh, but I think that's fine. I I agree. I think the self merge rate. Everyone knows what that is. Uh, even though there's a negative connotation to it, the negative connotation is because of what we're measuring and not necessarily what uh, the name of the metric. So. I, th I, I think um, both GitHub and GitLab um, make a will make a note of in the in the logs if you're the same person that opened it. Like it's easy data to get. Um, So could, you, could you try to get it with Augur, Sean? Not like right now, but is this something you could? We, we have the data that would be necessary to answer this question because we know the creator of the pull request in their case, and we know um, the person who merged it. And that's, that's actually, um, even in the commit log, there's a distinction between uh, commit committer and author. So the committer is the person who merged it and the author is the person who wrote it. And when they're the same person in the commit log, you can see it there as well as in the pull request data. <clears throat> and that goes all the way back to Brian Warner's facade project, which is buried inside of Augur now. <clears throat> so there was a comment from Jen in the chat about uh, yeah. including without review. That's, I just right Yes, that's the point I was going to make. They, if if there's a review recorded, even if there's no text in it, if somebody approves the pull request, so but that's a slightly different process because you could merge it. it well, like on, on most of the projects that I work on, it, nothing can be merged by anyone unless it's been reviewed. 
So I think that might be a different metric, but it's very, very close to what this one's trying to get at. What do you, what do you think of the title change that I just put in there based on that comment? It was mm. way to self merge without review. Are we interested in both points there? Do we want to know the self merge rate and the self merge rate rate without review? Or are we just interested in the one? You could call it a ratio of merges with and without reviews if <coughs> if you wanted to neutralize the title a little bit. I almost think the the without review would be a filter. I think some people some people would care about that, and I think other people wouldn't. I mean, some people just don't want yeah. um, the person merging their own pull requests, even if somebody else has done a review, um, because it's not great practice. Uh, definitely, if they've been with, without reviews, that's that's even worse. Um, but I'm not sure if everyone cares about that or not. I think it would also be uh, applicable to look at the lines of code changed. I think you mentioned that earlier, Ray. That if it's just a typo, like maybe that would, maybe that's another filter. I guess is lines of code changed. So if there's one tiny change, then it might you might want to filter that stuff out. You might want to only look at like those one um, self character, mm -hmm. one character change. Yeah, okay. I think we have that as a metric, right? Lines of code changed. Yeah, we have lines of code um, files changed. Um, I think files change might be a, a filter on pull requests. <clears throat> Jen, do you think that would address your comment of we included the self merge without review as a filter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I, I, the only reason I brought it up is because when I looked at this, I immediately started arguing with it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I had people review it. That's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> so that's the only reason. Okay, right on. I mean, isn't lines of code like somewhat, that's a little difficult one. Cause if somebody changed a key variable in one line, that's a big deal, right? I mean, that could mm -hmm. be a big deal depending on yeah. the code. And that needs to be really discussed amongst a lot of other developers. Mm -hmm. So, I wonder if there's something besides like lines of code. Yeah, lines of code is something that if you count it, it it's going to be, well, first of all, it doesn't really, as you said, Ray, account for what damage could potentially be done. I mean, changing one line can ruin everything. Um, I think the metric also encourages people to use more lines of code um, <laughs> to get more credit. Right. <clears throat> So I just put in the chat that I still think it's a good filter. It just mm -hmm. kind of, it doesn't answer your question to your point, Ray, but it, it yeah. kind of tells you a little bit more about it. Like if, right. and maybe where to look. Yeah, no, I mean, if you, you need to view it in the right context, right? So. Right, always. So, yeah, I mean, the other thing I was thinking, we were talking about docs, like some projects have docs in a separate like folder repository. So, if you're managing that project, maybe in docs repo, you allow self merges for simple typo fixes, but on the code, like, you know, you don't, but I don't know if we need to specifically address it. Yeah, file type changes, that that's a good one. So, Sean, when I was asking if Augur could do this, I, it was with respect yeah. to visualizations, tools yeah. for metric, because we're trying so, to. So we can we could build that um, then I we think could relatively it. easily if we we're clearly bounding this under the merge request yeah. umbrella. So we're only yep. looking at merge requests. We're not yep. looking at commits or other things. So, yeah. Um, and because reviews are. We're trying to get away from just like listing, you know, some of the metrics are like tools providing the metric that we're just like Augur or more lab. <laughs> it's just super vague in general. Yeah. So create a visual. That would be cool. All right. Um, I will add that to my list. I don't know how, you know, I just say, can you just do that? And that might be yeah. seven hours of work. So 
<laughs> so I'm not sure. Well, I mean, the way I look at this in all cases is everything that we build for somebody, somebody else needs. Like, so, <clears throat> and I do have some folks this summer that could work on that. Okay, that could be helpful. Ray, I've been kind of making edits throughout. No, 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 you're, this is great. So. So I forget what kind of information do we add into the implementation section? Well, that's where the, the kind of what I was asking Sean about. Yeah. Auger. With auger. There yeah. can be a visual, like here's kind of what it right. would look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's usually pretty broad. We used to actually provide in the olden days, like SQL statements. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, there were Jupyter notebooks in the they were like, yeah, that's for a long really time. A great idea. So it's become a lot more vague. Okay. So I mean, if there's anything that you're working on, Ray, say like with insights, you know what I mean? Yeah. Showing this kind of stuff that that can show up in here as well. Right. And then for like data collection strategies in there as well, that's often used for things that are like more qualitative in nature. So like here's right. surveys or interview questions that you could ask. Right. Yeah, I don't know if it fits in here or not. Like how do we distinguish like because i think i mentioned it just looking at non-bots doing reviews because like a boss can provide like a simple like review type of comments right if, if you're missing something but from non-bots like do we like how do we i guess it's part like implementation and it's part data collection what do we regard as a valid review like there was a reviewer sort of doing a thumbs up is that is that sufficient or do they need to provide like a specific hmm. comments via text a lot of reviews say lgtm <laughs> yeah no no i mean which is which is which is fine like if it's a simple change and it's all that's needed second pair of eyes right yeah so, uh, yeah and, and a lot of times i see people making github and gitlab are both nice that they, they let you make um line by line comments that get included in the review right like why did you do that maybe you should change it to this um, right. and that's actually extremely helpful to the developer because <laughs> right. it's all in context <clears throat> but the actual like written part at the top might be lgtm except for what i said <clears throat> So I mean, the, this is kind of, uh, go ahead, sorry, go, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, finish what you were no, saying. No, 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 go, go. Uh, I was just going to ask, so the, yeah. uh, the level of measurement that we're at is at the change request level, right? We're measuring the number of change requests that emerged without review, or are we looking at commits? I don't think we should look at commits, I think. The commits effectively are just um, uh, a more a more granular look at what's in the pull request. <coughs> that would be my view. I think the kernel team would disagree with me. Okay, so the so for the the description I'm of what this what metric thinks. actually. Oh, go ahead. Like commits versus pull requests. I think pull requests gives us the right level of detail. I think if you're talking about self-merge, I think pull requests is yeah. the, the way to look at it. Okay, that's what I was thinking as well. So the, for the description of this metric, this is very specifically the number or the ratio of change requests that are merged without review. The... Yeah. And there has, like I said, on most repositories these days, there has to be review to go into main. <clears throat> I 
I won't say Ajax, most, most projects that have traction and users and contributors. Merged. What's the, what's the term for the uh, contributor? Do we have a, is there a chaos term for the person that submits a, a change request? Contributor, I think. That's so too. I don't know though. Do we have the term author or? Author, thank you. Yeah, I think yeah. that I think that's what we've used in the past. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe Ray, you want to take some of these comments and try to tighten this up a little bit. Yep, I can. All right, cool. Manad, you look like you're back. Yes, I am back. My bus got delayed, so I was like, normally I reach here, but 10 of 5 max to be empty. So, <laughs> okay. uh, shall we go ahead and uh, move on to? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Manad, did you want to? Uh, did you want yes. to talk about your your action item? Yeah. So there were. Two things. One was update the template, uh, metric template, which I updated it. And I guess, Matt, you already merged it. So it's good. The template is good. Uh, as far as merging this uh, uh, release and revise metric together, I've done it, but I've not created a PR for this. The only hitch I was that uh, the proposal was to move it to the a contributor folder rather than a resource folder. I was thinking on it that whether uh, any newcomer who is trying to contribute, does it uh, does they need that template or the one who is already familiar and has done some work, then they need those resources. So it's more of a, where should we place this particular template once I merge these two documents together? My proposal was to keep them as the resources <clears throat> rather than uh, for a new contributor or uh, thing. Uh, I don't think it would go in the resources. I think uh, like the, a template would go in the resource, but a how-to document would go into the uh, probably the how to contribute folder. So. So these two documents that needs to be merged together are more of a like checklist that we developed. Yeah, I think I think we I think we need to have a basically a how to contribute folder that would uh, that would have that. Okay. Because this would be a and the the name of this document would be how to how to uh, create a metric or some such thing. Where would that be, Kevin? Like in the community repo. Okay. Yeah. And then this right here. Yeah. Okay. And, and so, then, so do... this... go ahead. Yeah. So this, this is kind of a checklist that once you create a metric or you revise a metric, these are the things that you have to uh, <clears throat> ensure as a quality metric. 
this is more of a how to uh, get into the kiosk rather than particular resource of a template. Yeah, so these, these the items that are in the how to contribute folder now, probably some of them need to be moved and some of them will probably go away. Okay. Uh, so the the how to contribute folder should explicitly tell it should explicitly tell the either the newcomer or the or the existing contributor how to do a task, right? Okay. So the the document that you're creating is it is a checklist, but it's also a it's a roadmap on this is how you create a metric and these are all of the things that are involved. So yeah. So if we're being very explicit in uh, in our guidance on how to do these things, that this document should be should be in the how to contribute and it should have an explicit name that says something like how to define a metric. Okay. Uh, and then the stuff I, I do realize that the stuff that's in there is uh, probably a mismatch of, yep. uh, of things and some of some of it will be maybe moved to different folders. Yeah, that is where I while I was creating a peer I got I stopped it for a while because I was looking at it and I felt some mismatch. Oh. I say I like Kevin. I don't know if you meant that intentionally, but like starting every document name in here with how to. Yeah, that. That I mean, I don't yeah. know if you if you meant that on purpose, but that's a really good idea. <laughs> I, I I did mean that on purpose. Okay, right on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but so I like it. It makes you then look at every one of these documents. So just for example, like community guidelines. Like, is this a how to? You know what I mean, and then because then that'll help, I think, specify what's in this folder. Okay. You know how to, for example, do a. Well, we probably don't want that one, but like how to do a, a DCO. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. How yeah, that to, one that one probably does stay, but we rename it. How, <laughs> how to do a. Yeah, so many of these need to be, <laughs> like. Mm -hmm. Slightly reduced anyway. But yeah, I get it. I like that. I like that idea. Okay. Can we take okay. out that community guidelines? Like, I feel like that's what a code of conduct is, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah the, the, and that just seems. So, okay. so if, if I think of in terms of how to be focused, how to be inclusive, how to be respectful, that fits in that definition. Oh, <laughs> the how to? Yeah, uh, how to be welcoming, <laughs> how to be respectful, how to be collaborative, how to be mindful, you know, mm -hmm. all the how to be fits in this list, how to be focused. I was kind of, I was kind of contemplating maybe moving it into a different folder and uh, maybe renaming it to like chaos community culture statement or something like that or so. yeah uh, I, I mean i could see that maybe a little bit maybe the how than... to's are like very specific like yeah. how because maybe maybe those guidelines are a little bit more nuanced than mm -hmm. like a code of conduct but yeah i think it should be in its own culture kind of thing i agree with you kevin yeah, so for those uh, for those those two kind of folders that we've been discussing here, one is the that, the resources <laughs> folder, and the other one is the the how to contribute folder. Uh, so I think they're they're both really important, uh, and we we also need to be careful that we don't get them confused, right? So the the resources folder provides kind of the the tools and templates for you to do your work. However, the that how to contribute folder that's the that's the the guide, the the explicit guidance on how to contribute to very specific parts of the project, and not 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 in general, but like very specific parts of the project. So, how do I how do I do something on the website? How do I contribute to? Uh, how do I get started contributing to Augur or something like that? So, uh, very explicit and very specific in, in where we're pointing them. Now I got the better idea. So uh, what I'll do is I, I'll go through these two folders again and then maybe uh, revise the files to these folders accordingly.
This is the other one you're talking about, Kevin. What's that? This is the, excuse me, the other folder you're talking about, community resources. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I agree. Like it's nice having our logos in here. But then there is one third thing uh, that also conflicts with this is on on the logos, especially or on the communication that we have a communication group that defines the logos, that defines the slide decks, you know, all the media guidelines. So these things are over there also as a repeated. Where are they? This? Uh, uh, yes. Well, let's let's bring them all together. Would be my suggestion. So, uh, so these things will go to the resources. They seem like resources to me that you yep. can create. A... Yeah, the brand style guide is definitely a resource. Yeah, and that okay. could be here. And yeah. then it would just be whatever the other folder was called, like media stuff. Okay, okay. So uh, I don't know. Uh, to move the folders around, should I create a PR as we were discussing first, or should I just move the folders around and settle it down and bring it to the community? Just create a PR and merge it yourself. <laughs> it's not funny, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> I've learned. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, just go ahead and create a PR just to move it. Okay. 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 That makes I'll a lot that. of sense because that will actually get rid of nicely a whole folder. Right. Is... <coughs> okay, great. Hey, quick question for you, Kevin. So when we're moving these things around, uh -huh. uh, do, we're going to need to make the uh, parallel changes on the website, right? To remap kind of everything. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that brings my another point is like I created a, a Excel sheet for the knowledge base to map these things where I've placed existing structure and the revised one. Uh, maybe I can share that link and then we can finalize it. Do we have a, uh, so this work had a, has a meeting assigned yes. to it, correct? <laughs> yes. When is, when is that? Did we miss one or did yeah. I miss one? We missed the, uh, like in last one, uh, I and Elizabeth <coughs> were only there. So, yeah. So when is the next one? Next week, I think. Yes. Like on Wednesday, maybe? Wednesday in the morning? Or maybe we finalize it over there and then I start moving the changes. Or yeah, we can do that. But this is a nice conversation here as well, though. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the one of the high level things we wanted to talk about with that was uh, uh, which high level folders we need in there. Right. Which 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 of them can go away? Right. Uh, which so which high level folders we we need? Uh, and I know like the uh, <clears throat> like I don't know if mentorship programs is is a high level folder. Uh, I don't know if local chapters is a high level folder. We've already kind of talked that that media outreach the stuff that's in there. It looks like it's being moved into yeah. the resources, resources mostly. Yes. Is that what's the newsletter MD in 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 that right. media outreach? What is what is that? It's more like info about the newsletter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would maybe we maybe we edit that to be a how to how to create the newsletter document, and maybe that one goes into the how to contribute. This is yeah. how to set up a chaos con. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So rename. So we rename those. How to. How to do a chaos cast. Okay. How to run a chaos meeting. Okay. Oh, I need to look at that. <laughs> And, but and, and, and this one is actually a resource. Yeah. Yes. So then, th this is what I've been facing when I was reviewing all these things. 
this is helpful though for me the conversation but then it also makes me think like we mm, under resources like templates like we all oh so here is the slide deck just making sure we have all of like our actual resources that people could use yeah isn't that stuff in google in the google drive the it slide is deck template? yeah so would know. it be here also or i think what we can... have oh go ahead yeah, I was suggesting like we can keep it in the Google Doc and just point a permanent link to there here so that they can grab it from there because it's a slide deck. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna suggest the same thing. So just create a create a markdown file <laughs> that points to the uh, to the drive where that stuff is at. I think that's important for the uh, like this uh, logos yeah. and images as well. Uh, like that? Yep. Okay. So still keep the Google Drive. Yeah, yeah. GitHub's not a great place to store uh, that kind of stuff. Images and it's more complicated. Type, so. Yeah. The barrier to entry is higher. Okay. So Doesn't then we, we want to do something similar with the the logos and, and images as image folders as well uh, well then yeah, what about like Je jen has a comment about how to be a good community member <clears throat> that, that's old sorry oh. i'm eating lunch so i, oh. I popped for typing in chat no it's okay i just wanted to make sure we recognized it we have do we kevin elizabeth do we have the Okay, so they're not here anymore. Remember how we used to have like the media stuff? Uh huh. Is that not here? Uh, no, that is not here. Okay, great. I mean, that's fine. Because I was just going to say, if we have it here, then we probably don't want to like. Nope, help. it's that stuff is supposed to be in the uh, in the knowledge base. So it was left. It was intentionally left off the. Uh, gotcha. The folder. Gotcha. Or okay. Off the right the on menu structure. Right on. Just double checking. Okay. Cool. <laughs> And then via the knowledge base, it would take you essentially to here. It, it ultimately get you to the GitHub folder. Is that correct? The so like let's say I came here and I was looking for the logos. Oh yeah, yeah. So you go to uh, uh, resources uh, com community, yeah, community knowledge base, yep. and then you go to the resource. Uh, yep. Community resources. So when you click on community resources. The, you would have you would have, you don't have templates here. You would actually uh, have all the resources. All the resources would be right here. So you'd have a yes. a page. I got gotcha. that would be slide deck or chaos slide deck. <coughs> Excuse uh, me. And chaos then when you then when you click on that page, it'll point you to that slide deck. And in the future, maybe we have multiple <coughs> slide decks that are used for different purposes. So that okay. page can point to three or four different slide decks that people may want to use. Okay, makes sense, thank you. Okay. And we are almost out of time, so I will, uh, I'll open it up. Is there, is there anything that we need to talk about today? So, uh, yeah, just one thing that we can add on the, I have shared a link where I've created the current structure of the knowledge base and the proposed that I'm experimenting it. Okay, mm -hmm. should we keep it here or move it somewhere? Uh, yeah, so current structure tab is there, which shows the existing structure of the knowledge base mm -hmm. and the proposed where we make those changes and then move the files accordingly. This is where you're, you're moving. This okay. is where the current structure is with the website link and the GitHub link. Like right. exactly pointing where this page is coming from. And the proposes one is the one that we agreed upon and then I can move all the files accordingly. This is great. So proposed one is not yet final. I need a consent of uh, community whether, okay, this is the one how we want it. Then I can start moving the files accordingly. I think Thank this you. discussion yeah. will help a lot for yeah. the proposed structure. 
Yes. Yeah, I think for the uh, the next meeting that's coming up, that's coming up this week. It's next uh, week. Next, next week. week. Next week. I, I think the plan was to the plan was to talk through this structure. Oh, that's so, great. Right. Uh, Vinod had the action item of uh, putting this together in this way, and then uh, kind of the general action item for others was to kind of go and look at a few other uh, open source projects and kind of see see what high level uh, folders and headings they use in their knowledge bases and in their community handbooks uh, to see if there's uh, something we can copy or bring in. Okay, I like this because this like, and I think based on the conversation today, this should help a lot in terms of, and and I'm I'm with Kevin like, you know, things like that, like, or some of the things that might be in here. I'm just picking things at random, but like remove as well, like err on the side of less. Right. I always want and uh and actually looking at this now i am remembering that in that last meeting where we were all together discussing this we had decided we did want to have the community initiatives the working groups and the local chapters folder and the reason we wanted to have those three folders is because it aligns with that doc uh, the governance okay. document that was created yes. so yes okay uh so okay. keeping keeping local chapters as a folder is uh is desirable. Uh, yes. Keeping software projects as a folder, I believe, is is desirable as well. Uh, we just we may want to be. We want to make sure the language around those folders matches what's in the governance document, though. And but like it, yeah. okay, so that's fair. And then maybe in this case, kind of following, like this, maybe we could just have a single document about local chapters, for example. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. You know. Yes. Yeah. Here's our chapters, and here's here's how this, we make them up kind of thing. This, this was more like uh, in the governance document, we have a main thing. Okay, like we have a local chapter, but yeah. more details go to this file. That points yeah, no, to I, that. Yep. And, but I'm saying it's two markdown files. We could just have one that describes the entire right. team, everything. Right. Yeah, where do would you find then the information about those chapters? So as they are the, right now. If you want to look at this at the same uh, Excel sheet, if you go to the current structure tab, you have the website link and you have the GitHub link also. Yeah. So local chapters, Chaos Africa, Chaos Asia, the website link and the GitHub link is there. So that's the link to the information. Yes. That they won't be a page on their own, just a link for each. Uh, yeah, there is a page of their own on the website, and that link is I have I have pointed in the Excel sheet for the restructuring. So these pages do actually need they need more information. So this is just the it's basically the starter information. Okay. Actually, this is something I could ask. You know how, like, we have folks that are going to start some stuff in Latin America and the Balkans. Mm -hmm. Like, this is something that I could ask them to take a look at because it would be nice as that if they created kind of consistent narratives yeah. or a consistent document that described who the chapters are. Um, what the efforts are in the local chapters, you know what I mean? How they connect with chaos of, um, project. We have template for those communities to start creating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I think we've run out of time. Uh, so I encourage if I encourage anyone who would like to continue having the conversation about the the community handbook and these documents and the knowledge base to uh, come to the uh, uh, that knowledge base meeting, which is going to be on June uh, 14th. Uh, and that is uh, that meeting is dedicated to 
uh, that is a working meeting, so it is dedicated to actually kind of editing and, uh, and working on the community handbook. Uh, do we have any action items for the uh, for the self merge rate uh, metric? Did we? Uh, Ray was going to action like, item. Ray, take a peek at it again. Yeah, Ray was yeah. going to. Yeah, I yeah. think I made a few additional edits and accepted also the suggestions and changes. So let me know if you need anything else. Okay, so we'll we'll pull that one back in uh, for next week. Yep. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, and please uh, feel free to uh, add anything to the agenda for next week if uh, if it comes to mind. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.